Father, we thank you this morning for waking us up to see the beauty of another day. We thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for restoring the peace of this country again. To you be all the glory in the name of Jesus. As we go into your word now, give us that word that we need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Welcome to another wonderful time with Jesus on glorious morning shower. It's a new day and I pray it should be your own day. In Jesus' name. The word for your shower this morning is restoring our passion for God. Don't forget it's our month of restoration and revival. And today we are considering restoring our passion for God. When you hear the word restoration, it means it was there at a time, but it has been overtaken, overtaken by circumstances. It was taken away. So restoring it back means this passion for God was there before, but something could have hit it away. It could be trouble. Sometimes it could be success. Overwhelming success that one didn't expect sometimes take them away from God say restoring our passion for God Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 to 5a yet I I hold yet I hold this against you you have forsaken the love you had at first consider how far you have fallen Repent and do the things you did at first. He said, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. It's happening. We're talking about a, 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 a backsliding child of God today that need God to bring him back. And sometimes when we talk about backsliding, it does not really mean that you have gone into life that. It doesn't mean that you are a fornicator, you are a thief, you are a drunkard because you know you are a womanizer or you are an adulteress or you are whatever. You know, we're not just calling those things. Anytime a child of God is disconnected from God, you are a backsliding child of God. And there is a need. Many are in church today that their passion, just like we're talking about some pastors that we look up onto as fathers, what would they preach in those days? They are condemning it now. So are you now saying that if Jesus had come, then you would have been in hell? Or they would have changed the standard of God because of you? Or they would rewrite the Bible because of you? So we're talking about restoring our that first love we have for God. There is nothing we can talk about building more, getting to know more, but not saying the one we the foundation we laid before is now faulty. And now you need another foundation. No, that's not what I'm talking about. So perhaps there is a gap between you and God. He said, Remember the feet at which you have fallen and repent. Period. If you want a restoration of your passion for God, the first thing is remember the height at which you fell. Then at that moment, repent. I never knew I did it. I never knew the devil could get me this sheep. Jesus, show me mercy. Return me back to my first love for you. I used to do this, do that for you before. But situation, circumstances has led me out of it. So today, show me mercy, and you hear, you will see God come into your space. I pray that today, devotional will bring many back to their passion for Jesus. You used to go on evangelism, not when church announced it on your own before, but now you don't do it again. You need that passion to come back. You see, forget the condemnation of offering. Uh, a friend of mine, you know, put something on Facebook recently, which I have to now send the rest, you know, lend a voice to it. I, I hardly make comments. I can tell you, 
in the last one year I, I can tell you i've not made comment about some people's posts even when i don't agree with what they say because it's not everything you say but that day i've just felt strongly in my spirit that you respond to this for those of you who keep saying pastors it's just money you know there's, there's this normal saying among and it's more common among believers not even unbelievers you see the school that they use church money to build and have a common a, 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 a poor man's son or the members who poor members who contributed money to build the school can't take their children to that place my brother and my sister there is no offering that can build school you know, like my comment on the on the on the platform that day was that if you are not close to the tree, you don't know what the wind does to the tree. Even when I before I became a pastor, I never belonged to those group because as a businessman, and you know, do you know what it costs to build a university? The land alone, not many hectares, not less than ten, I mean hundred hectares. Government will not even listen to you. So saying they use it's not members' money. If you know what most pastors go through. Now, in our school at the time, I, I took my children's school fees to pay the teachers so that members' children who couldn't afford to pay school fees over there could go. And my children were at home for that season. All at home, not going to school. That time completely. Then tomorrow, when that school pick up tomorrow, and God bless that school, maybe with the university, you know, somebody will not say poor people's money. It's not poor people's money they used to be the university. So they told me this thing one day, and I googled the school they're talking about. And at that moment, about 10 years ago, the net worth of that school was 10 point something billion. And I showed him, I said, you see, and he closed his mouth. How many offerings do you think you can go? Oh, the, the, the offering is, you don't do anything, you collect it and be keeping it to be school. Right, you just, you don't do anything again as you're collecting it, you say, it's for school. And condemning pastors that they don't always help their members. You don't know whether they help or not because you are not there. And if I tell you what members do, you will not even help some. But who are we? So that we don't also incur the wrath of God. We need to ignore members because they are human and keep doing what God asks us to do. I have seen a woman who lost her husband and remarried. The new husband built a house for her. She was living in her house and she was still coming to line up when we are trying to give support to widows to the extent that somebody confronted her and she opened up yes now is my former husband not dead so i'm not a widow i have to call and say it is not you are talking about madam please step down i have had people that will say do take this share to people and they will disappear with it and they are still poor people you talk about you know so Beloved, see, your passion for Jesus is what determines what you do for Jesus. Nobody tells you whether to pay tithe or not. Nobody, nobody, I will not, I will not insist pay or not pay. Ah, do you love him? Has he done so much for you? You sang it during choir, during uh, praise and worship. He has done so much here. Yeah. What no man cannot do. And you sang. It shows in your offering. It shows in your giving. How do you feel when you come to church and uh, you notice that uh, the, the wind that blew last night removed the roof of the church and you have the capacity to build it? You wait until they announce it. The church of God. So, you see, now, there were people that used to do those things for Jesus before on evangelism. They look for, you know, vulnerable members in church that they can support. 
but along the way that passion because of the kind of things that some brethren are posting on facebook and all those things their desire to do those things has died down can imagine if i call the name of the denomination that this person this 80s this new 80s belong you will be surprised i want to call it on this on on, on network is is <laughs> The, one of the righteous believing denomination in this country, a strong member in that denomination, where they have a lot of restrictions, that somebody one time even say that he died, she died and went to heaven, and it is only that denomination alone he found in heaven that they are the only Christian that God accepted. A member from that place told me there is no God. And he is now 80s. So you can see how things degenerate for people. I pray for you today on this glorious morning shower that yours will not go that way. May the Lord rekindle your fire again. May the Lord revive you again. That passion for Jesus, that passion for soul winning, that passion to look for the less privileged in church. I know of a man that every Sunday as he's coming with his offering, he has extra money in case somebody doesn't have money to go home. He looks for those who need money, who need assistance. The Lord will revive you again back to your first love in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you on glorious morning shower. It's your day and today will be a new day for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.